Okay, today we are looking at comparative anatomy. All right, uh, so we use comparative anatomy to look at the similarities and differences in the structures of various organisms. Um, and through this, we can actually gauge evolutionary relationships. So we can see if they had a common ancestor and so they have an evolutionary, evolutionary relationship or not. Uh, usually the more alike the structures are, the more closely related they are evolutionarily speaking. Um, and we have three kind of classifications um, when we look at comparative anatomy, and that's homologous, analogous, or analogous, and vestigial um, structures. Okay. Okay, so like I said, we have homologous structures, analogous structures, and vestigial organs. Okay, and we're going to find out what those are. So, analogous structures. So these are potentially alike in function. So they can actually do the same thing, achieve the same function, but they actually don't have a structural relationship, um, meaning that the structure of them can be actually very different. So ana means different, so analogous, you think, means different structures, um, which is the complete opposite of homologous structures, which homo means the same, or one, or uniform. Okay, so because they are analogous structures, they have different ancestral origins. So they can't have, they don't have a common ancestor. They come from different ancestors, and they've developed separately, not from one common um, previous ancestor. So we actually call this convergent evolution, and what this means is that there's no common ancestor. However, these two structures have developed um, and due to potentially the same being in similar environments have developed similarly in function so they have a, potentially the same function but a different structure okay so i know that's a bit confusing but looking here at this picture is a good example of this so you can see uh, the bird wing you'll be able to see you can see the bones in the bird wing you might be able to see the bones in the bat wing um, each bone is color coded so you can see how the bird and the bat wing is similar and these um, are similar in function the insect wing is also similar in function to the bird and the bat wing it, it serves the purpose of helping the insect to fly however um, insect wings and bird and bat wings are not homologous they're analogous because they don't have that structure. Insect wings don't have bones in them. So they're very different structurally. Okay, okay, homologous structures. So these are actually similar in structure. Though, just to be confusing, they may, um, they may have different functions um, and they may not even look that similar from the outside. But what you need to remember is homologous, homo means one or the same structure. So they have a similar structure. Okay, that's what's important. Um, if they have a similar structure, then this implies common ancestral origins. So you can see that they've actually developed from one ancestor or from a, a previous ancestral origin. Um, and then these differences that may have arisen are due to the environmental conditions that they're in, which causes the species or the organism to adapt. Okay, so you can see the bat and the bird wing are homologous. Um, and you can see the different bones that are similar in each organism. Um, however, bat wings are different and different looking to the bird wing, which has feathers. Okay, I'll show you another example. So here, these animals in this picture all possess a pentadactyl limb. And penta means five, as you know. Dactyl means limb, so five-digit limb. Okay. You, again, color coded, you can see how it corresponds in each of these organisms, um, how they have the five digit limb. Um, although, as we know, a whale's fin looks very different to a human's hand, okay, or a bat's wing, and they also have different functions, okay. So, a bat's wing serves the purpose to fly, whale's fin helps it swim through the water, human hand helps us um, manipulate objects, uh, cat. Um, cat's leg helps it walk okay so they have a similar structure you can see that with the pentadactyl with five digits but different functions um, and they look different from the outside okay so homologous homo same 
structure. So same structure is the important thing. And remember, same structure means very a common ancestral origin. Okay. Here's another example. We have four-winged ancestor. This is our common ancestral origin, but you can see that it's branched out into these different types of insects, which all still have that four-winged structure, but look different um, and have developed differently based on their environment. Okay, last but not least, we have vestigial organs. Now, these are organisms have evolved from a common ancestor, but this particular organ or structure has not been used and has been reduced. So it was once present and functional in the ancestor and has, it has become almost redundant. So it's not needed and so it becomes somewhat reduced and not used. Okay. For example, um, this is an easy one for, you, for us to relate to. We know that we have the coccyx, which is the tailbone in humans. Now, that was once um, a tail in our um, ancestors. Okay. And because we had no use for a tail based on our environment, um, adaptive pressures have caused this tail to reduce just to a tiny bone, which is at the end of our spine. Okay. Also, as you can see, so the coccyx is down. You can see it at the bottom of the pelvis of the human. Um, another example of vestigial organism, uh, organ, sorry, is the hind limbs in a python. Okay. So we know that pythons don't have any use for legs. However, it's come from obviously a uh, um, an organism, an ancestral organism that had legs and it has become a vestigial organ in the python. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you.